grace to you and peace from Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. Part of the conversation surrounding medical assistance in dying, or MAID, M-A-I-D, is the unintended consequences among medical and hospital staff that is informed by a study in the U.S. prison system and the PTSD that many correction staff are experiencing in the prisons where executions are taking place. While they try to safeguard the mental health of the prison officials through protocols and procedures that minimize access to the prisoner being executed, psychologists studying both those involved and those not directly involved with the execution, they all show symptoms of PTSD. They are finding that simply being part of a system that is intentionally involved in taking a human life can cause lasting psychological damage. Symptoms of PTSD were found in many of the prison staff, from the guards to the administration to the custodians. Each section of the prison was affected by the executions, even if they weren't actively taking part in the executions themselves. How this fits in with medical assistance in dying is now psychologists are wondering about the effects that this particular procedure has on hospital staff and personnel, the, the medical administration, the custodians, everyone who works in a hospital. They're wondering, is the same phenomenon happening where human life is being intentionally taken? A study was done among nurses who worked in a hospital where MAID was administered, and they were interviewed when MAID was legalized, and then six months later, to see if there were any effects on the nurses. And while the researchers admitted that further study was needed, they noted that nurses experienced feelings of sadness upon recalling many of the patients they provided care for who had died by way of MAID. And now, many healthcare workers are reporting COVID-related PTSD symptoms, and people are wondering how this impacts the wider community and what can we do about it. Because many people I've talked to and I've interacted with on social media have said that they don't know why they're feeling so stressed. They have enough to eat. They're getting by financially. They have a comfortable place to live. So they're asking, why am I so stressed? Why am I so anxious? And you might be asking that too. Or it might be in the back of your mind, not allowing you, you know, complete peace. You could be out in your deck in this beautiful spring weather, the cup in hand, and you're wondering, why am I feeling so off? Why am I so stressed and strained? Why am I so anxious? Or you might be binging your favorite show after finishing your delicious takeout, supporting local businesses. And while you're laughing at the funny program, you're asking yourself, I'm laughing. But why do I also feel so much sadness at the same time? And the answers to why you're feeling so much negative feelings could be that the unknowns and the uncertainties of the next few months are weighing on you. You might be asking what the long-term impact this pandemic might have on the economy, on your job, on how we live our lives. You might be asking if short distance travel, curbside pickup and social distancing will be the new normal. And yes, those worries cause stress. But also, you might be feeling our common stress, the stress that the system, a system, our system is feeling. Think of the world and our community as an interconnected system. A system can feel pain and a system can transmit what it is feeling. Like a virus, you can catch stress when it impacts enough of the community. It's like when you walk into a room 
and immediately you feel tension. Even if no one is there or people aren't saying anything, and it's before you note the body language that would indicate a conflict is or was happening. I was recently at a meeting that, by all accounts, seemed productive. We had great conversation and uh, we were getting lots done. But I could feel a tremendous amount of tension in that room. And I couldn't sense where it was coming from because everyone was smiling and getting along. Or so I thought. Then what seemed out of nowhere and out of character, someone blew up in anger at an issue that I thought was put to bed. And I thought to myself, oh, okay, I, I was sensing tension. And that's where it was coming from. I'm sure psychologists have a name for this and can explain why it's happening, what is happening. So the stress, anxiety, tension, and grief that you are feeling is everyone's stress, anxiety, tension, and grief. This shows us again just how interconnected we all are. Just as the virus can be transmitted person to person and country to country, we receive and transmit energy to others. And today, a lot of people are transmitting stress, anxiety, tension, and grief. And we are also receiving all of that. Because these are the thieves and the bandits that Jesus talks about in today's reading. These thieves and bandits steal life because they steal joy, they steal happiness, and they steal compassion, and they destroy love, and they kill peace. And they leave behind pain and scarcity. That's why Jesus said that he was the gate he is the gate to a different way of living. Jesus is the very embodiment of love, of peace, of compassion and joy. And he says that it is his way that leads to abundant life. That's why he came, he said, that we might have life and have it abundantly. So the good news is that because we are in Christ, we can emit a different frequency. We can disrupt the negative energy that is being transmitted at this time. We can put out positive energy through prayer, through caring conversations, through checking in on neighbors, through not getting sucked into the negativity vortex that is much of social media, and through reaching out if you need help for not listening to the negative thoughts that pop into your head through trusting that the spirit of the risen Jesus is the gate through which we find abundant life. So then, your life may proclaim, as we emit these messages, as we send out that energy, as we proclaim with our words, with our deeds, with our thoughts, and with our prayers, that Christ is risen, that Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.